In this video, we're going to focus on the visible light spectrum. We're going to talk about the colors found in it, the wavelength of those colors. We're going to talk about the frequency, energy, and the wavelength relationship among those colors as well. So let's begin. Have you ever heard an expression called Roy G. Biv? This expression, it ranks the colors of light in order of increase in energy. R is red, O is orange, Y is yellow, G is green, B is blue, I is indigo, and V is violet. So that's Roy G. Biv. To the left of the red light, you have infrared which is outside of the visible light spectrum. We can't see it. Now, past the violet, you have ultraviolet. Ultraviolet radiation, you can be exposed to that from the sun. We're going to focus on the visible light spectrum. To the right, the frequency of the light increases. So a photon of blue light has a higher frequency than a photon of red light because blue light is to the right. Blue light also has more energy than red light. However, red light has a longer wavelength. So as you can see, the colors here are ranked in order of increase in frequency and increase in energy from low to high. And the wavelength is ranked in decrease in order from very long to very short. So red light has the shortest wavelength in the visible light spectrum and violet light, no I take that back, red light has the longest wavelength, not the shortest but red light has the longest wavelength and violet light has the shortest wavelength. So here's some questions for you. Which photon has more energy, a green photon or a yellow photon? So energy increases to the right, the green photon has more energy. Now which one has a higher frequency, a blue photon or a yellow photon? The blue photon has a higher frequency. Now which one has a longer wavelength, orange or red? Red has a longer wavelength than orange. Now, which one has a lower frequency, yellow or indigo? Since frequency increases to the right, the one on the left is going to have the lower frequency, and that's yellow light. Now, which one has less energy, orange or violet? Energy increases to the right, so the one that has less energy is on the left side, so that's orange. Now, which one has a shorter wavelength, blue or violet? Wavelength increases to the left, so the one with the shorter wavelength is on the right side. So violet light has a shorter wavelength than blue light. So now you can answer questions related to frequency, energy, and wavelength in the visible light spectrum. Now you may need to know the values, so let's go over that. The visible light spectrum ranges from a value of 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. Let me rewrite it this way. I'm going to put it in order of increase in wavelength. So I'm going to write it backwards. So we have violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So at this point, this is at 700 nanometers. And at the edge of violet, it's 400 nanometers. Between violet and indigo, it's about 400 and 450. Now blue light ranges from 450 to about 500 nanometers. Green light ranges from 500 to about 570, and yellow 
It's very small. It's 570 to 590. The range is limited. Orange goes up from like 590 to 620. So red is from 620 to 700. So if you get a question, you know, what is the color that corresponds to a wavelength of 530 nanometers? So 530 nanometers is between 500 and 570. So that would be a green photon. Now what wavelength of light corresponds to 650? 650 would correspond to the color red. That's between 620 and 700. If you get something like 420, that would correspond to violet. These two, you can separate them approximately around 425. That's like a rough estimate. So now you know the wavelength and the colors that they correspond to on the visible light spectrum. Now there are some equations that you can know that's important for this chapter. Here's the first one. C is equal to lambda V. Sometimes instead of V you might see F. V and F they both represent the frequency. Lambda is the wavelength measured in meters and C is the speed of light which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This is the speed of light in a vacuum. Light travels at this speed in empty space. However, if light were to pass through water or material like glass or diamond, it slows down. The speed of light in a material other than empty space is equal to C divided by the index of refraction. So take for example the index of refraction for glass. That's about 1.5. So the speed of light in glass is going to be 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.5. So it's going to slow down to 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So the speed of light changes based on what material it travels through. But now let's focus on the first equation. So let's say if you have a wavelength of light that's about 500 nanometers. What is the frequency of this light? So to solve for frequency, we need to find V. V is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Now notice that the wavelength is in nanometers. You need to convert nanometers into meters. And one nanometer is about 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So to find the frequency, take the speed of light and divide it by the wavelength in meters. So 500 nanometers is simply 500 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Notice that the unit meters cancel out. And so you're going to get the units 1 over seconds, which is the same as s to the minus 1 or hertz. That's the unit for frequency. So if you type these numbers in the calculator, you should get a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now that we have the frequency of the photon, how can we calculate the energy of the photon? What equation can we use? We need this equation. The energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. Now Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. So let's calculate the energy in joules. Pay attention to the units in this particular problem. Now the frequency that we calculated in the last example is 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. But instead of writing hertz, I'm going to write s to the negative 1 or simply 1 over seconds. Notice that seconds and 1 over seconds cancel, giving you the units joules. So 6 times 10 to the 14 times 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 you're going to get an energy value of 3.976 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that's how much energy a photon at 500 nanometers has. So that photon corresponds to a bluish green color. And so one photon has 3.976 joules or 3.976 times 10 to the negative 19 joules of energy. That's the energy per a single photon. 
Now sometimes you can express the energy of a photon in electron volts. One electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So to convert joules to electron volts, we need to divide by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. And the reason why we need to divide is so that the unit joules will cancel. So if we divide 3.976 by 1.602, you should get 2.48 electron volts. The 10 to the negative 19 will cancel because they're the same. So now you know how to convert wavelength to frequency and frequency to energy, and you know how to convert joules into electron volts. So that is it for this video. That's all I got, so thanks for watching, and have a good day.